When I tell y'all, I ain't never got more requests to do a video than I did for the Clark Sisters tribute movie on Lifetime. Y'all wore my social media out and wore my last good nerve that it is one o'clock in the morning on Wednesday morning, late Tuesday night, late night, early morning. And I'm pushing this video out just for you, saints. Let's talk about it. <coughs> Nessa girl, I never thought a day would come that we would see another biopic series that will rival that of the Jackson 5 series on VH1. But let me tell y'all something. I just got through watching the Clark Sisters, uh, I was about to say Clark Sisters Reunion Blazer, because y'all know I'm always talking about Jack, Jackie Christie when she wore her Clark Sisters Reunion Blazer. I just got through watching the Clark Sisters biopic on Lifetime, and I want to tell y'all something. I had a good time. Now let me tell y'all something. I was very apprehensive about even watching this thing. To be quite honest with you, I wasn't really interested in it. Those of y'all who've been following me for a while, y'all know I really don't get down with the church and all its intro workings, especially them, them real churchy, churchy churches like the church, the Kojic church and the Pentecostals and all them. I don't have time. I don't get involved with it. I let them people be over there running around the church and spitting all in people's faces. They hollering and shouting and carrying on with their black stockings and their white pumps on. I leave that for the church girls. But somebody like me with a theater and musical background who loves to sing can always appreciate a good film. I am a history buff. I love biopics and I'm here to say I really, 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 really enjoyed this rushed ass biopic. Now, Sister Act 2 was my all time favorite movie for anybody who doesn't know that. Thus, that gives you some sort of precedent on how I like movies with a lot of songs in it. But is it me or this movie was rushed as hell? It wasn't rushed as hell when it got down to Cameron having her plastic surgery. Kind of roundabout when the mama went to the hospital, then the shit just went off. It was like, damn, like, we don't even know what the hell Karen was in there having surgery for. I know she said, I'm doing this for me. So I assume it was some sort of elective procedure, maybe a gastric bypass or breast reduction or something of the sort. But the movie got very, 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 very rushed at the end. That would be one of my negative critiques, not to mention the movie moved very fast. I mean, every time it went to commercial break, you came back and them helpers had done age six years, had done had kids that we didn't know they had. I mean, but I get it. It was a biopic about five sisters and a mama. There was no way in hell in an hour and 30 minutes worth of viewing time, two hours with commercials, that you could squeeze the intimate details of six people into one film for an hour and 30 minutes. So I do appreciate the approach that the producers took. They said, listen, let's center the movie around one character that is easy for, easier for us to produce. And they centered it around Joe Jackson and Drag, which was Dr. Maddie Moss. So the movie opens up with their mama waking them up in the middle of the night. Now I'm sitting there eating my chocolate chip cookies, drinking my milk, thinking that she getting them up to go to church. Lo and behold, Jesus, Mary Magdalene, the Virgin Mary, Peter, and all the disciples don't whisper something in her ear. Hey, Mary Moss, how you doing? Let me whisper in your ear. They had something in my life to hear. They had no hum the melody in her ear, and she had no woke them kids up to make them sing that melody. Now, of all the damn things in that house, all the things that daddy should have been mad about. He should have been mad about her getting out that bed in the middle of the night, banging on that damn organ and waking them cheering up to sing them damn songs. If that did not give me Jackson 5 STs, I don't know what, 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 what did. But I will say from that moment on, I was kind of intrigued. I was like, okay, this is going to be good. And is it me? Or did y'all go the whole movie thinking the mama was Vanessa Bell Calloway? I swear for Lord, I thought that woman was Vanessa Bell Calloway. Welcome to our lives, 
Angelou Ellis, I believe that's her name. She played Maddie Moss. Let me tell you something. If you ain't never did nothing in your life, Deaconess, you played the hell out of that role. Yes, God. You, you, you did that. You did that. Now, I don't know if you, you studied you study under the, the, the Lord Jesus Christ himself or if you watched a whole lot of what's love got to do with it. But that character, her facial expressions, her voice, everything was giving me Vanessa Bell Calloway. And I swear for Lord, that's who the hell Maddie Moss was. Quiet as it's kept, Vanessa Bell Calloway could have played that damn part uh, or whatever the case. But, Angelou Ellis, you did a damn good job. So we learned early on, Denise is the rebel. Now listen, Nisi, and it's so funny, you the rebel on this show and you was the rebel on being Mary Jane and both times your name was Nisi. Now is it me or did y'all think Nisi was Amber Riley? See, when I saw the commercial, I thought that it was Amber Riley and singing, so that this was a singing movie. I was like, oh shit, Amber Riley got a role, but it wasn't Amber Riley. It was, I, I don't know her name, forgive me, but it was the girl that played Niecy on Being Mary Jane. Um, so it opens up, they're cleaning up the house or whatever. They find Mama Gold Records up under the table, up under the, uh, up under the bed. And they say, girl, why Mama Records up under the bed? Because Daddy don't want her to see him. Daddy don't want her to record. Um, and, 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 and Mama just got Twinkie running up and down the road with her. I was like, okay, I see where this is going. This is real cute. That man was feeling some kind of way. So let me tell y'all something about this masculinity. Because this Clark Sisters show has got so many different things we could talk about. Domestic abuse, fragile masculinity, toxicity in the church. Um, um, so much. The only thing that was missing was somebody in this bitch being gay. But let's talk about how fragile the daddy's masculinity was and how hard he subscribed to these roles in the church that a woman needs to know her place. He told that woman ambition did not look good on her. Mind you, all the while, he wasn't even bringing in the type of money that was needed to sustain a household that damn big. Now, I didn't know that all them kids didn't have the same damn daddy. Quiet as it's kept, only Nisi, according to what I found out from the documentary, last name was Claude. So I'm trying to understand how four of y'all don't care. Me that, well, maybe I'm wrong, but and correct me if I'm wrong. But I thought, was Jackie just not his child or all of them weren't his child and only Denise was his child? Somebody correct me because I'm trying to figure out how they went by the name Clark Sisters if Denise was the only one that was his child. Nevertheless, mama said she had to get on the road and make some money that she wasn't finna stand behind nobody um, in no pulpit passing out cakes and cornbread and whatnot, being no first lady, and that man did not appreciate it. That choir scene. 911 emergency, reconnect the community. Let me tell y'all something. And this is the issue that I have with church folks. Cause y'all so uh, sanctified and full of the Holy Spirit that you let child abuse slide. Now we was down to the schoolhouse and the teacher would have threw a shoe at your child. You would have been down there ready to fight Cusser, go call the news, go down to the school board, march from Washington to Selma and every damn thing else. But if you was down to the choir house and the choir director throw a shoe at your child, you're going to look at your child and say, well, you should have sang on key, daughter. If that was not some mental abuse, that mama was deranged. She was so heavenly minded that she was no earthly good. Ain't that what the old people say? But I'm gonna tell you something. She would have had one time to throw that damn shoe at me and that would have been the last time she threw a shoe. That would have been the last time she did direct the choir. Cause that, that, that frame from her glass would have been in her eye from when I slung that bad boy right back at her. Let me tell you something. Like mama, uh, like Lauren Hill mama said on Sister Act 2, singing does not pay the bills. Singing does not put food on the table. And singing in this choir is an extracurricular activity. I am not getting paid to entertain the saints. I'll be damned if I'm coming here spending my time where I could be out there fool out line with a boy and fool out line with a man and you gonna throw a shoe at me for some volunteer performance. No God, honey, it's not like you took the whole choir on the road. See, you was cheating on us. You was using us for the organ, using the church for a free rehearsal space. And the only people you was pushing up to the front was your daughters, Matthew knows. Sound very reminiscent, don't it? Nevertheless, she threw that shoe, but that's reminiscent of old school Sunday school, old school church mothers. I know all the people that grew up in the church back in the day, they could relate to that Gustapo that they call the choir director. Um, 
I did not like how when the mama came and, and, the, and the daddy was saying, they're having a pastor's wife dinner, I really need you to be there. And she pulled the candy. She was like, you know, I got a booking or whatever. And the daddy started beating on her. Um, there was nothing godly about that. And unfortunately, during that time, a lot of that went on. I'm very proud of the mother, though, that she didn't find some sort of scripture to justify her stand with a man that was abusing her. Again, they had to speed this movie up very quickly, but I'd be curious to know what was the extent of the abuse, how long did it last, and how often did those girls be on the receiving end of a backhand slap. Jackie went to try to help her mom and call 911 or whatever, and that man came down there and backslapped Jackie and put her out and told her he wasn't her daughter no way and that she needed to get out of the house. And that was a very, 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 very harsh thing for her to endure. Um, and she better than I would, because I'd have packed my shit and I'd have never came in. You know, matter of fact, me and my sisters would have jumped his ass. That's what the hell we would have did. But that's their daddy, and the Bible say, Honor thy mother and respect thy father, and thou days shall be longer. Ain't that what y'all say? Yeah, I ain't honoring shit that's abusing me or my damn mama. But that's just what my Bible say. The Bible a hard knocks, bitch. Put your hands on me. And I'll see you next lifetime. How about that? Um, the girls record for the first time. Down in the uncle. Top, top story thing. Um, that was a beautiful, beautiful thing. The very first time they recorded sin. And so their daddy was out the scene and they never thought they would have got the opportunity to. Now this thing got very toxic. That mama was so focused on that music. She had her Joe Jackson going on so bad. I cannot believe that she suggested to Twinkie that she drop out of school. She straight up told her daughter, you're going to have to choose. Now mama, you just told the man that you had to get on the road and help put money on the table. But yet, you told this girl to drop out of school. Like, I mean, ain't, ain't no good being full of the Holy Spirit and your stomach empty. I mean, you know, can we half and half it? Can I be three quarters full of the Holy Spirit and a quarter, use that other 25% to fill up my stomach? I'm just saying, that was very horrible advice, but it goes to show how focused on that music that mama had tunnel vision. And I'm curious to know what the mom's story was, right? Because it was giving me very much Whitney Houston, Sissy Houston teas, except for the fact that the mother had gold records. So did the mother dream to go higher, bigger, but she couldn't? Was she trying to spread the gospel? What was it that had her pushing her daughters so hard in the area of artistry that she would be willing for Twinkie to drop out of school in order to fulfill this destiny? Um, The girls get ready to perform down to the convention and the mama wanted Karen to sing solo and Karen was real shy. But that mama saw something in Karen. She saw something in Karen that Karen is seeing herself. And she got up there, she gave them girls the introduction for the gods, honey, for God. And then she started singing and she handed that mic to Karen. And Karen showed up and showed out. I was like, yes, Karen! I don't even know that lady. I'm calling her first name like I know her conversationally and everything. I was like, yes, Karen, go in and let have. You better sing your song, girl. Sing your song. That was the T. That was the T. Then after that scene, we find out that the girls were number 20 on the gospel charts. Again, the movie is moving very fast. She went from singing her first solo down to the convention to being number 20 on the goddamn charts. Now, when they had time to record a whole album and what all the songs was on the album, the movie didn't tell us, so I can't tell you. So I'm just going to move right along to Denise was out there sneaking with the deacon. Yes, God, honey. Denise was laying it low and spreading it wide all over damn Detroit. They said she got the goodness. They said her name was Denise Claw Goodness because she gave the boys the goodness, okay? And in return, they gave her a whole bunch of babies. But we're going to say that for later when she talking about them seven kids showed up to that funeral. I was like, damn, girl, you holy. Uh, <laughs> Oh, the church folks ain't going to appreciate this. But like I said about Trick Daddy Mama, you holy and your pussy must be full of the Holy Spirit because it's real friendly. It was spreading the gospel all over Detroit and everywhere else in the United States. That thing been around the world and ah, yeah, yeah, for you to have pushed out seven kids. My grandma told me that women that had that many kids ain't having kids. They having puppies. And that was a litter of children down to that film. But 
I, you know, this is a, this is a gospel review, so I'm not gonna judge that lady with both of my eyes, just one. Moving right along, Denise snuck in the house and mama came downstairs. She was down there talking to Twinkie and she was telling Twinkie right. She was like, Twinkie, there has got to be more to life than this. You gave up Howard University to do this for mama. And I'm gonna tell you something, I was gonna save this for later, but we've learned this. Twinkie was that mama's emotional husband. That mama needed Twinkie more than Twinkie needed that mama. And I'm gonna elaborate on that later on. But Denise told her right, like I want more than this. And you find that this always happens in those church families. You always have that one person that's like, nah, I'm not going with the program. I'm going to go against the grain. This is fine and well. I'm saved, sanctified, full of the Holy Spirit and the good secular dick. But I want a life outside of the church and I'm tired of feeling in prison. Cause quiet as it's kept, the way the mama was raising them and that strict ass doctrine in the church of God in Christ, it feels very cult-like. It's giving me very David Koresh. It's giving me very Jim Jones. It's giving me very Waco, Texas. It feel like if one of them bishops with them um, Alice in Wonderland hats that y'all be wearing down in that church, tell y'all to drink poison, that the people down in that Kojic church will. I'm just saying, look at Andrew Caldwell, daughter. He's a prime example of what be going on down there to that Kojic. See, that's why I don't go to that Kojic. When people want me to visit, I visit to the Baptist. I really visit the non-denominational. I go around to the Catholic and let them pour that water on me and, and, and put beads all over me and everything. But that Kojic, I have to pass. You know, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm unavailable this week. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm booked. I'm so sorry. But maybe next time, maybe next time we can make it happen. I just, that cold just scared me, honey. And I know that I'm supposed to be able to go to the church and lay my burdens down, but I'm scared I'm gonna lay my burdens down and pick up a whole bunch of other shit that I do not want. It's bad enough the corona going around. I don't need no extra shit from the damn cold Y'all can have it all. That you know what, this anointing is so good that I'm going to give it back to you because I don't deserve it. Not at all. Um, Denise woke up in the morning and apologized to the mama and the mama made her breakfast. I will say the movie did show the mother trying to, trying her hardest within her godly being to try to understand Denise. And she just couldn't because her head was so far in the Bible and she didn't have just a half a foot in the street. The mama act like she ain't never lived before. I bet, you know, the mama act like she wasn't even allowed to jump rope or play double dutch. I mean, like, damn, mama, can we do something? And do y'all notice, and I'm sure we've all got an example of this in our family. It's the people who come from the strictest of church backgrounds that always wild out the most in the streets. Just like in college, the kids that were the most off the chain, both guys and girls, were PKs, preacher's kids. Because there's just a certain level of living that you gotta let people do, especially in 2020. You can't keep nobody all kivered up, trying to suppress what they really feel. People get hot between their legs and in their butt. They wanna have sex. It's animal instinct. It ain't got nothing to do with man-made, uh, 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 organized religion. And you, you can't suppress somebody hitting puberty and getting hot between their legs and in their butt and wanting to have sex. It is designed by nature. Animals do it, we are animals, and animals don't go to church. It is a primal instinct. We'll talk about that in a whole other video because I'm sure somebody's gonna find some fitting Bible scripture to make it all make sense in their mind, and I'ma let you have it. This anointing is so good, I don't even want it. You ain't even gotta share it with me, cause I'm not deserving of it. You go ahead and keep it all for yourself. God told me to share it, to give freely, and I'ma give that back to you. Um, Jackie shows up on the porch with pants on. A child, in that scene, when that mama slapped that damn door, I was like, what she, why did she slam the door? Was it because Jackie hadn't been over there in a while? Then I was like, oh, she had pants on. Jackie showed up with the skirt. Then the mama let her in. Now listen, her mama was much like my grandma. How the hell you reached and made the correlation between that girl having pants on and smoking reefer? I do not know. But you did it. I guess the pants, the reefer, drugs, prostitution, and disco music all go together in her mind. But that thing was funny as hell. Mama then goes on and surrenders the group to Twinkie. God knows she needed to. Them girls was tired. Mama was running them in the ground and she said something. She said, you know, and you've always been better with your, with your sister Denise than I can. 
And you know, I'm gonna take a moment in this to say this. My parents and black parents used to always say, it's not my job to be your friend, I'm your parent. I'm not my child's friend, I'm their parent. And I'm a prime example of my parents were staunch believers in it. I'm not your friend, I'm your parent. Whereas it, there was no line of communication. I could not talk to my parents about shit. By the time I got to college, I was so disconnected from my parents. They didn't know who none of my friends were. They didn't know what none of my interests were. They didn't know what I liked. They didn't know how I felt emotionally about anything. I mean, they're, they're just the lines of communication were completely cut because they were so busy being my parent, being a disciplinarian. And yes, at the end of the day, some may argue that I turned out well and it was for my good, but bitch, I'm in therapy now, fucked up emotionally because of it. I'm giving y'all a little bit of my business and y'all need to pray for me. Now that's what I need. Keep your anointing. Give me some prayers to, get, to hurry up and get me through therapy. I, hope, I wish I could rush through therapy as quickly as Lifetime rushed through this movie, but this ain't about me. This is about Twinkie them being messed up. Let me get it off of me. Take your parent hat off sometimes and talk to your children. Because if you don't talk to them, they're going to talk to somebody else. And they're going to fall victim to the Denise's or getting bad advice. Not, not falling victim to the Denise's. They're going to end up like Denise in search of something more. In search of somebody to connect with. And bad things will happen to them. Like early pregnancy. Like Denise is what I wanted to say. Um... Then we move on to Karen got a holler. First Karen sang, they got a record deal, then Karen got a holler. Karen had don't never got no holler before. That man had no holler at her at, on the porch in the foyer, and Karen ain't know what to do. You know what I'm saying? In the back of her mind, she was singing, giving him something he can feel. On my wedding day, of course, Jesus. You know, but that's what was going through her mind when that fine ass red bone had no hollered at her in the name of Jesus. She didn't know what to do. You know, this movie was very funny about how how church people cope and how y'all only holler at other people within the church. I would hate it if my dating pool was reduced to the usher boy and the choirs and the deacon son. Like that would really suck. That's worse than my prospects right now on Tinder, being stuck on Miami Beach, me being black and all them being Latin like this. But it was funny how y'all cope. Um, then we find out because Twinkie had her head so far up the Bible and not in the business book and had her head so far up the mama's uh, choir robe and ain't never had a taste of the real world or no material items or no secular items. <laughs> Twinkie had them fucking around and sold. Bitch, sold they sold. Sold all the music, the, the future, sold a whole damn group to the damn man, not knowing what she signed because she wanted a Lincoln so damn bad. Let me tell you something. I know that happened a long, long, long time ago, but having to relive that in 2020, that shit would have made me so damn mad. I'd have had called Tw Twinkie and cuss her on her phone. That to me feels like one of those things that those sisters probably carried and that bothered them through their adulthood the same way Tracy Braxton to this day is still bothered by the fact that her sisters went on and signed that record deal without her. That thing would hurt me all the money that they forewent because Twinkie wanted a damn Lincoln. Twinkie, where the hell was you driving to? Your mama didn't let you go nowhere but the choir practice in the church's chicken. Them the only two damn places you went. So I'm not even understanding what you needed all that doggone car for. Um, and, 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 and had y'all mama let y'all listen to Motown or turn on the TV or the radio, you would have realized that Barry Gordy was screwing everybody over in them damn contracts and you would have known what to look out for. But because you, you were so heavenly minded, you was no earthly good. You knew nothing about what was going on in the real world and you got taken advantage of not once, but twice. And we gonna talk about that second time in a moment. Um, Denise reveals that she was pregnant. You know, y'all, is it me 
Or was y'all scared for Denise in that moment? I was so doggone scared for Denise. I said, ooh, this is not going to go over well. And quiet as it's kept, I thought that that was going to be the end of the group. I thought that that was going to be that Tracy Braxton defining moment where she has this baby and we're no longer going to be a part of the group. I thought that the mama was going to get kicked out of the church or the group was no longer going to be affiliated with the church because Denise was pregnant. But the movie speeds along to them being in choir rehearsal and her having a child later and we realized that it was all okay. Then Karen get a holler. The dude wanna holler at Karen. Karen who got the holler? He wanted to holler at Karen. Karen had already got the holler. Karen get engaged. But Karen said, listen, I don't wanna be a pastor's wife because my daddy was a pastor and he left mama and beat on her and she didn't wanna be a first, wife, first lady and I don't want none of that. And he said, you not your mama, I'm not your daddy. Let's do the damn thing. So then they do that. And then this is what really makes the Clark sisters. And granted, I knew a little something about them. I knew that they were one of the first people or to, to, to make gospel sound R&B-ish to reach the masses. See, a lot of y'all thought Kirk Franklin was the first person. Makes me clap my hands, makes me want to dance, but stop. There ain't nothing new up under the sun. The Clark sisters are actually the first people to take that gospel and give it a somewhat secular sound. Now, what I did not know, because I'm not very well abreast of their catalog, was the fact that she uh, sampled Stevie Wonder's beat in order to make that song, and that was their first crossover song, or whatever the case may be. And poor mama, so heavenly minded, she was no earthly good, didn't know the difference. They thought mama was gonna have a cow when she found out they were singing Stevie Wonder, but mama didn't even know they were singing Stevie Wonder. Mama just wanted them to make sure they sung it right. Child, uh, <laughs> she was about as blind as Stevie was, quiet as it's kept. Um, they performed at the Grammys then. And that was a cute scene when they was down to the church and the mama was telling them about all their different book gigs coming up. And then they was performing at the Grammys, looking like the dream girls. Mama was in there doing that shuffle step, double cha-cha, shuffle step. Where your dream girls, God will make you happy. Yeah, 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 we're your dream girls, God will always care. They had that sequence on, baby. Yes, God, they had it all flowing, looking like flying squirrels and everything. They had them titties kibbered up. And let me tell you something. I know that, that the Lord ain't, 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 ain't there for secular stuff, but I, somebody let me know. The Lord must be all right with sequins and earrings and jerry curl juice because, baby, them girls had it on, and they sang for the Lord. They sang. They sang, they sang, they sang. They sang. Okay, so then after that, they fast forward to the mama getting reprimanded by the deacon board, by the bishop board. I don't really understand how the culture work, but from what I understand, it's kind of like the government. There's a couple people up at the top that run the whole thing, and the mama was the international director of the music. But the people at the top said, y'all was on the Grammys doing a double cha-cha, spin ball change. We're your dream, girls. And you would not dream up in this culture church. You would be obedient and you would listen. And we are not here for all of that. And here's the thing. Your daughters can go out and do whatever the hell they want to do. But you will not be on stage getting too big, singing and carrying on. Despite the fact that singing is paying the bills. Singing is putting food on the table. But you would not embarrass this church. If you still want to be the musical minister internationally for the coachings. And I thought mama was going to let it ride. Then she turned around and she gave that man a piece of her mind in a holy way. Then they fast forward to them getting ready to sing on stage again. Mama had her outfit on. And I was clapping for mama. In the words of Tyra Banks, I was rooting for you. Because I thought mama was going to go in and let her. But she had to let that man sit her down. The girls didn't even know what happened. She wanted to hold on to that position in that church. See, I don't like that. How that church hold people down and keep them from being who it is they're supposed to be. That mama could have rose to the top. She could have been up there with Dion Warwick and them and Sissy Houston and them. Ooh, how can I? How can I? She could have said background and ain't no way like Sissy Houston. She had what it took. But the men's in that church, they was too jealous of her. They had that jealous spirit. They didn't want her to get bigger than them. It ain't had nothing to do with her being on the stage because she was spreading a good word and she was kibbed up with her sequence on, doing her double cha-cha. With your dream, girls, God will make you happy. Yes, God. 
So after that, they get a new contract. Praise the Lord, they finally get an opportunity to make some money because Twinkie done had them all lost in the sauce and messed up for 15, 18, 25 years, whatever the case may be. The mama had asked Denise, Denise had asked the mama could she watch the two kids and the mama had said no. The mama said, I raised mine, now you raise yours. They got to that table and let me tell you something. You know, money makes life a whole lot easier. It really does. Especially when you have children. And for Denise to have been looking at a contract that was lucrative, that would have for sure put money in her pocket, and for her to walk away from it at that moment means that the life that she was living had to be hell. It had to be miserable for her to make the decision to walk away from her sisters and that type of money that would have given her material comfort. She was like, baby, I don't want it because this money comes with a price and the price is too much for me to pay. She was like, I want to live my own life. And that was a very powerful scene when the mama told the record executive to leave. And the mama said, what did, what did I do to make you hate me so much? And she expressed that the mama had given so much to the church and everyone around her that she had nothing left to give her. She gave her the scraps. And it's funny because I know several people and I have a close cousin of mine whose father is a pastor. And my cousin has expressed to me, my daddy can find time and compassion and money and energy and understanding for everybody in that church. But when it comes to me, He's just blank. He's got nothing. He's cold. It's an attitude. I've heard that from multiple people who have family members who are dedicated to the church or hold heavy positions in the church. And again, it kind of goes back to the Real Housewives of Atlanta candy thing. She's so married to her music that her family gets the scraps um, from their perspective. Um, that's kind of how it was with, with Denise. She was missing nurturing. And the nurturing that she did not get at home, she found in the streets. That's my take on it. Um, then there was three. There was like Destiny's Child, honey. Then there was three left. They were singing their behinds off. And uh, we find out with Twinkie that the mama was right. Um, Twinkie went off with that man. And she told that man to step outside. And instead of that man letting Twinkie sit there and have a conversation with her mama, that man came back in there and pushed Twinkie mama down. Now listen, had he met us 15 years ago and pushed the lady down, we probably would have been rooting for him because there was plenty of times in this movie Maddie Moss needed to be pushed down. But the way he pushed that woman down and moreover, the way Twinkie left with him after doing that was very concerning to me. And it was the first sign that something probably was not going to be right with their marriage. And lo and behold, fast forward, go to the commercial, come back. Twinkie had a kid, she in a nasty house, little apartment, broke, destitute, and the man was just using her, talking to her any kind of way. I'd be curious to know, oh no, I think she divorced the man or left him, kind of the movie kind of alludes to that, but I would love to know more about Twinkie's story. Was that man putting his hands on her? Was he a drunk? He obviously was cheating, coming home all times of night, and he was using her. He was using an abuse, just screwing her and using her, and then, and, and, ooh. And then you using her for her God money. See, it's one thing to use people for that street money, but you was using that lady for that God money. I'm sure he don't got that back 10 times over. God don't like ugly. He ain't too crazy about light skin with good hair and shaved up beard either. Um, Jackie go ride to the house to check on mama. And I'm assuming that the mama was a diabetic because they didn't, they didn't really get into that, but it was about her eating and Jackie said something about the foot. But I like how over time the mama was slowly changing and stepping into the 90s. Step into the 90s is a metaphor for like stepping into the future. We used to say that in the 80s. Girl, step into the 90s. The mama finally was coming around and stepping into progression and she bought Jackie some pants. And the pants probably were some old $4 pants from Docs, but it was symbolic of the fact that, baby, I see you, and I love you, and I embrace you, and I really smiled during that scene. Now, she did something that pissed me off, and black people, we good for doing this, especially us Southerners, us church folks, us Midwest folks. We all about these doctors don't know what they're talking about, and all I need is my herbs and some prayer without paying any thought to the fact that God puts doctors on this earth to help us. Sometimes he don't talk to us directly. He talked to us through them doctors, and mama wasn't taking her medication. So mama ends up in the hospital, and mama ended up dying. 
my, my dad in that hospital. And then they come on to the fume. Come on to the fume. Hey, hey. Come on to my fume. Jesus is my doctor. He writes out all my scriptures. He gives me all my medicine to my fume. So we get down to the fume. Them girls couldn't reach down in their purse and get a peppermint good. And Denise done walked her ass up on that microphone and done showed out down to the church house. Now what I did not like, I forgot what sister it was. She gonna turn to the other sister and say, did y'all know she was gonna be here? Why wouldn't she be there? And I'm gonna take a pause right here. I'm gonna take a page out of Iyanla Van Zant's book when she had the Pace sisters on there. There should be no way any obedience to any religious doctrine should make you turn your back on anybody you share flesh and blood with. I don't give a good goddamn what the world say, what the church say, that's not godly. God is not pleased with that. And I know people in situations actually close to me, uh, particularly in the Jehovah Witness uh, 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 religion, they disfellowship people. If a family member do something worldly or secular that the elders don't approve of, now the rest of the family members can't talk to this person. That person can't come to family events and weddings and stuff. I don't like that. And there is no man-made religious rules, no church-made rules that's going to make me turn my back on something I birthed or something that I share blood, flesh, bone, and tissue with. That, that just ain't right. And the, and, the, and, the, and the fact that people in the name of God can find ways to make that, make that make sense, that don't work for me. And that's one of those things, that was one of those areas where I really side-eye the hell out of the church or any organization that would teach anything of that nature. Back to the regularly scheduled program. Denise got up there and she said her piece. She said her piece with her seven sons. My seven kids that mama don't want you to know I have because she was shamed of me and that was a lot. I know the saints was taking it back, but hell, whatever time to get the truth out, then at the fume, you know, this is the final time to speak on it. You might as well clear your heart. Ain't no need of you letting that woman go to the grave with your solace and your, your, um, yo yo. what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for? Ain't no need in letting that woman go to the grave holding on to the pieces of the puzzle that you need to be made feel whole. So if that was the moment you needed to say everything you needed to say, because I'm going to tell you something. Me and my daddy had a conversation on his deathbed and there were just, I didn't get to say all of it because I didn't feel it was appropriate. But there were a lot of things that I said because I said, no, 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 no. You will not have me in therapy for the rest of my damn life crying because I got all these unresolved issues and these things that I never said to you. Listen, you ain't even got to say nothing, Mike. But I'm just going to sit here and tell you all this. You do whatever you need to do with it. You reconcile however you need to reconcile it. You can stick it in your pocket and bury it with you in the grave. But you're not going to leave me on this earth after you don't damage the hell out of me and leave. And now I'm all messed up in this earth and you somewhere up in the big old sky. God done prepared a place for you in the big old sky. And I'm down here with the devil. No, ma'am. That ain't how this going to go, bitch. Your ass going to be mad in heaven about this shit. And I'm going to be healed down here on earth. That's how we, we both going to be sitting up here mad. I don't think so. Um, the way they did Denise was wrong. And not letting her ride in that casket. And that first car was wrong. And I've seen a lot of black families, baby, people get in trouble about who riding in what car in that casket and if their name is on that obituary. Folks get mad about that type of stuff. You know, those are fighting words in the black family and they almost came to blows. Uh, I like the fact that it was Twinkie that said she would ride with Denise in that other car. After that, we find out Twinkie has a nervous breakdown. And she went about the mama because she left all that in the third. Dorinda gets suicidal and almost jump off a bridge, but the, the, but the Lord spoke to her. And then Karen goes in for some elective surgery. We don't know what it is. I'm sure one of y'all will drop it in the comments and tell me. And uh, she goes into a coma and she comes out. And then the movie goes off again. It got very rushed at the end. Very, 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 very rushed at the end. I will say this about the Clark Sisters movie. I was reluctant to watch it, really wasn't interested because it doesn't align with my life and the way I live it and my ideology and beliefs. From an artistic perspective, it was an excellent movie. The, the, the music was excellent. Despite the fact that I'm not the most churchy, churchy person, there was a lot for me to gain from it. And I think spirituality is transcendent. Although I don't get my religious cup or my spiritual cup full from 
the 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 uh, organized religion and the church per se I still have a spiritual cup to be filled and this movie definitely filled it up the singing was amazing the the, the this this movie could not have been cast in any better way than it was everybody did their parts none of the acting was bad it damn sure didn't have that Tyler Perry feel, which I thought it was. And Lifetime, y'all got, y'all made up for that Aaliyah and for some of them other biopics that y'all did. Because y'all know y'all can fuck up the thing. But y'all got it right with this one. Y'all wanted the Clark Sisters. My throat now hurts. It is 1.38 in the morning, Funky Bunch. I did this for y'all. Don't y'all ever say, I ain't never did nothing for you. Peace be on you and praise the Lord and y'all have a good night.